Hey, Coach, thanks for being here. Um, you can go ahead and make uh, opening remarks, and then we'll open it up to uh, Ruben Frank and then Kristen Rogers. Yeah, certainly. Uh, thanks, Brett. First of all, uh, listen, I appreciate everyone's well wishes. Uh, I've had a lot of text messages, phone calls the last, you know, 24 hours or so. Uh, and listen, I know this virus affects uh, people differently, and I'm very respectful and mindful of that. Um, and I also want everybody to know that, that I'm, listen, I, I feel great. Uh, energy levels high, um, had really no symptoms whatsoever. Uh, and I'm very fortunate, you know, because I do know and understand that, uh, you know, this virus attacks people a little bit, a little bit differently. I've, I've been in great communication, constant communication, not only with our medical team and doctors, but also my staff and, and the team itself. And, uh, I can still control, you know, I think one of the things that I've learned this off season is I can still run the, run the team, you know, virtually. And, and that's, that's what I would, why would I, what I have been able to do today, uh, even, even yesterday, you know, holding staff meetings, things of that nature, team meetings. Um, and, and I'd also want to reiterate the fact that, you know, I'm very comfortable and confident uh, that the protocols that we have in place, uh, at NovaCare are for their, you know, for the, for the best interest of the football team and, and all those, uh, all those, uh, you know, that, that enter, enter that, that building. And, and uh, it's, a, it's, it still is a very safe environment. And, and one of the things that, you know, we all need to learn and what I need to learn taken away from this is obviously we need to protect ourselves when we're in, in the community uh, away from the building, continue to wash our hands, wear our masks, do the, do the social distancing that uh, you know, that the, um, you know, medical uh, teams and doctors have, have prescribed. So um, obviously, you know, we're taking this very seriously uh, around our building uh, and in our everyday lives. And uh, again, we need to continue to do so. So um, we understand that things like this are going to happen. And, uh, you know, we, I've, I've been able to talk with my staff about contingencies, not only with, with players, but also with, with staff members. I mentioned I uh, believe last week uh, when, when we got together about this. So, um, you know, I'm not going to speculate on, on, a, on a timetable for me. Uh, I treat it just like players. So I'm not going to speculate on that. And uh, when I'm back, I'm back. So uh, with that, we'll open it up for questions and uh, hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Okay. Um, go ahead, Ruben, and then Kristen Rogers. Hey, Doug, glad you're feeling well. Uh, we're all concerned about you. Um, do you, it sounds like um, you're you know that you contracted this outside the Novacare complex. It, it, are you are, are you pretty confident that that's the case? And and what what gives you that sense? Yeah, you know, listen, and, and respectfully, and I'm I'm gonna say this one time, and I'm gonna leave it leave it at that. This is something that. Uh, I don't necessarily want to comment on for myself or speculate on anyone else. Uh, obviously, um, I'm just going to reiterate the fact that uh, you know I feel very good about the safety of our building and the protocols that we have in place. Uh, that's one thing that I do know, and uh, obviously, going through this has, has reinforced that uh, you know for me at this time. Okay, go ahead, Kristen, and then Rob Mati. Hey, Doug, glad that you're feeling well and at least showing no symptoms as of now. Um, you know, talking to some of the players yesterday, they said that your message to the team is that it's not just about one guy. When we talk about the contingency plans for the players, for both you coaching virtually, curious what you're trying to tell the guys right now, because it is inevitable, you know, maybe not you testing positive again, but it is inevitable that these players will test positive at some point during the season. It, it, you're you're exactly right, and and that's that's been my message uh, really all off season when when we went virtual way back uh, March 12th, March 13th, and you know it, it, the message still is obviously we have to protect ourselves uh, not only in and around the building but outside the building as well. But you know what the thing is too that um, uh, it's it's never been uh, since I've been head coach in, in Philadelphia. It's never been about one guy or or one group of guys or whatever. It's been about everybody and. Uh, this is no different, you know, um, uh, obviously I'm fortunate that this, this is happening at this time of, you know, our season or our training camp at the beginning and, and not necessarily say in October, November where, where you could miss, you know, games. So, uh, it's a matter of just, just protecting each other. Um, and, and our goals don't change, obviously, uh, we're, we're going to, you know, continue to, to press forward one day at a time. 
Go ahead, Rob, and then Les Bowen. Hey, Doug, glad to hear you're doing well. Hope your family stays safe also. Could you tell us a little bit about, I know you want to do as much as you can virtually, but does Do Staley take on a bigger role inside the building and what is going to happen with that kind of structure? Um, yeah, you know, I do everything I can virtually. Um, you know, I just finished up a bunch of player meetings, you know, group meetings this morning already. Um, guys are getting ready for, uh, for a walkthrough on the field and, and, and yeah, Deuce, Deuce being the assistant head coach, he just, he just assumes my role, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day activities, uh, in the building. And, and so, uh, he and I, uh, talk, uh, every single morning, uh, I give him, you know, through, through communication with him, give him sort of, you know, my thoughts on, on where I'm, I'm leading and what I'm thinking. And then he, he carries that message forward, but. Uh, he's done. A, he's done a great job, uh, obviously, so far, and and we'll continue that going. Les, and then Zach Berman. Hey, Doug. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, are you uh, so obviously you're at home? Are you quarantining from the rest of your family, or are you getting the rest of the family tested? Are you concerned about that at all? Yeah, I'm I'm quarantining away from my family, um, you know, and so I'm making sure that I I keep my distance, uh, you know, from them and and you know uh, wear my mask wash my hands you know do those things uh while i'm while i'm here at home go ahead zach and then paul domowich hey doug you said last week that there are contingencies for everyone in the organization how much thought had you put into this possibility before it happened and does this affect or, or change the way you're going to plan those contingencies going forward um, yeah, no, great question. You know, for me, I, I have thought a lot about the contingencies and this doesn't just happen. You know, I, I thought actually, I thought about this quite a bit over the summer, you know, if, if something like this were to come up, not only with me, but, but with any of my staff or any of the players and, and, you know, as that's, this is why I feel really, really good about, uh, my staff, uh, the guys I have in place to, to carry, uh, to carry the, uh, the the torch, so to speak, in, in in somebody's absence, and of course, you know, in my absence at this time, and and the same way with with players, you know, you, you treat it. Um, I, I guess you treat it just like uh, you know, if a guy were to get hurt, you know, and they're going to miss miss some time, and and uh, you got to have the next guy prepared and ready to go, and and this is no different. Paul, and then Dave Zingaro. So we were talking to some of your late round picks yesterday. Um, is this a bad year to be a late round pick or an undrafted player? I mean, how do these guys compensate as far as flashing for you and the coaching staff without preseason games? Um, number one, I, 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 I think that this is actually a good time to be a late round pick and, and possibly a free agent, even these young draft picks. And the reason I say that is because they, they – you know, we've already had a week with them on the grass. Uh, we, we're going to get some really good opportunities here uh, in these next coming weeks. Uh, they're they're going to learn a lot from the veterans. Uh, the way I've got the schedule set up is, is for them to learn and, and to be successful. Uh, and, and, then, and then once we get into the padded uh, portion of training camp is, is where we really get to see, uh, you know, where these guys are. And, and so, you know, it, it's, when you, when you have an opportunity like this, it's, it's, it's for all of us as coaches in particular of coaching everybody up. It is not just about the starters and getting them prepared, which, which we do every year, but now more importantly, it's about getting these young guys because we truly feel that these young guys are going to be the ones that are going to have to help us, you know, uh, throughout the entire season. Go ahead, Dave, and then Jeff McLean. Hey, Doug, this weekend we saw two starting quarterbacks end up on the reserve COVID list. Uh, we talked about this a couple months ago, but have you given any more thought to the possibility of quarantining a quarterback, just given the importance of that position? Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, that that happens. And, and I think we know that, uh, you know, these things are, are going to going to happen probably throughout the course of the season. Um, you know, I, I, if it, if it, if it happens, you, you hope it happens early enough where you don't get to the regular season, but um, conversations that are ongoing still with my staff and, and, and offensive guys on, on, on staff, you know, press and, and rich Marty, you know, those guys and, and haven't decided anything yet on that, uh, obviously, but, uh, it is something to, uh, consider as we move forward. Jeff and then Mike K. Uh, Doug, 
what rules do you have in place for the players for when they leave the building? What can they do? What rules do I have in place? Well, I mean, obviously it's typical training camp and, and, you know, we have, we have curfew at 11 uh, at the hotel. My, the day, the days are full. The days are filled. You know, the days are filled. We're on a 12 hour work, work day with the players and, and uh, there's not a lot of time at the end of the day. So, um, you know, listen, you know, once they leave the building, um, they're on their own and it's, it's up to, up to me and my staff and, and our trainers and doctors to educate them on, um, you know, the, the protocols obviously outside of the building. So this is, this is just a great time for me to, to be, a, uh, I think to be kind of an ambassador, to be a leader, to really, um, educate our team on, on how to, uh, you know, protect ourselves outside the building. We got time for a couple more. So we'll do Mike and then John Clark. Doug, uh, the Saints sequestered uh, a part of a hotel to kind of rent things out and kind of control the traffic coming in and out. Have you guys discussed that at all about potentially maybe renting out a hotel and, and kind of forming a home base for the team during the season? Well, as you know, you know, we use the, the Courtyard Marriott down at the Navy Yard as our team hotel for training camp. And, and obviously, you know, these are these are all things that were negotiated between the players and, 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 and management. Um, and we've actually given, given the, the players, the, the veteran players who have homes here, we've given them, you know, the option to either stay at the hotel or stay at home. That's, that's part of the, part of the agreement. And, and, um, listen, everybody's situation is different. Everybody wants to protect their families, obviously. And I, I understand that. So, uh, we do give them that option to, uh, to decide. Go ahead, John. Doug, I imagine that you have taken safety uh you know and had protocols when you're outside and not at the facility and you got the virus so does your perspective change at all on your confidence about the nfl and you guys being able to have a season safely and keeping everybody healthy my confidence hasn't changed at all um i'm extremely uh obviously optimistic but uh you know um I feel like we're going to play. I'm confident that we're going to play, you know, and, and it's, it's, just, it's, it's unfortunate. I, you know, I, I, like I told my team last night, you know, this, this virus, it holds no prejudices, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it can affect any one of us. And, uh, and I'm sure many of you have had family members or loved ones or people that you know have been affected by this virus. So it, it doesn't, it, that part of it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that we've got to, you know, abide by the protocols that are in place. They're in place for a reason, obviously for our safety. Our building is, is, a, is a great place to be. It is a safe place to be uh, for our players and coaches and, and, and all who are involved. So uh, I'm looking forward. It's full steam ahead for me. I, I'm, you know, obviously I'm, I'm itching to get back in the building at some point and, and, and be around our players and, and get these guys ready for a season. Thanks, coach. Thanks, everybody.